Both als and so wie are used to make comparisons, but very different kinds of comparisons. And I am so excited to show you in this video all the details that you need to help you correctly select between those two options and know how to correctly manipulate them in a German sentence. If you've been trying to use als and so wie already, you are well aware of the difficulties involved. And if this is new territory, for you, then I am really, really glad to save you some valuable time. As always, the best way to get a handle on any German grammar topic is to first understand how does this work in English. In English, we can make either an equal comparison or an unequal comparison, and that is the difference in how we set it up. If we're making an equal comparison, then we would say, for example, I'm as tall as you, right? So this is the as, as combo. If we're making an unequal comparison, we have to use the word than. I am taller than you. The good news is the same concept applies in German. So in German, for unequal comparisons, we are going to use the word als that lines up with than, right? And for equal comparisons, we have again two words, so wie, the difference being we, they're actually two complete words instead of how we repeat as twice in English. So we have ich bin so groß wie du for I am as tall as you, right? Equal heights. Ich bin größer als du. I am taller than you, right? Unequal heights. So in this first set of equal comparisons, I want you to see how all I've done is just trade out the adjective in both languages, right? So I am as tall as you or rich as you, nice as you, same thing in German. Ich bin so groß wie du, ich bin so reich wie du, ich bin so nett wie du, right? So it's always so, then an adjective, and then the V, right? So this is, this is the equal comparisons. Then here, the unequal comparisons, notice how we have a base adjective, groß, reich, net, right? It's repeated down here. And now we've put it in its comparative form by adding on an ER. And that's exactly what's happening in English. We have our base adjective, tall, rich, nice, and we've put it in its comparative form by adding also an ER, right? It's the same in German and English. That's so awesome. Taller, richer, nicer. So it would be tempting at this point to think, okay, great. So when it's an equal comparison, I'll use the so wie. When it's unequal, I'll use the, the als, you know, like got it, no problem. But there are more components at play here, such as what I was saying about the adjectives and these being comparative, etc. You need to know this stuff too. So let's look at some formulas that are going to help us out. So with our first formula, this is for the equal comparisons. You can see that we have to work with a subject noun in the nominative case, right? In this instance, we're using the nominative pronoun ish, right? Talking about ourselves. Then we have to have a verb in this instance, am, I am. Then we can see here, here is our zo and then the dot, 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 and then the V, the dot, dot, dot getting filled up with an adjective, which I briefly mentioned on the previous slide. And we can see that here with the gross every time. So we have zo gross V, zo gross V, zo gross V. Now, what is this final, com this final component? The nominative case again, right? We're making a comparison. It's like an equal sign, right? An equal comparison. So whatever is on the one sign, the one side of the sign has to be the same as over here. That's why we have the nominative case twice. And you can see that in the pronouns in German that I'm using here, right? We have you, he, and they, which then translate to du, er, sie. But the thing is, if you read this in English, I am as tall as you, okay, that's fine. I am as tall as he, I am as tall as they. You might very well think that I just made a typo, that these are mistakes. You're like, that's, that's not how we say it. Well, more on that in a second. 
First, I wanna look at our second formula, which is for the unequal comparisons, therefore using the word als. And what I want you to see here is how we have the nominative case again twice. Now, I've mentioned this in the previous slide, nominative case, what am I talking about? Right, the German case system with nominative, accusative, dative, genitive, how that interacts with German gender, masculine, neuter, feminine, plural, right? Very, very big topic that we can only just touch on in this video, I cover everything you want to know about the German case system, right? All the, the, the core, the essentials in my flagship paid course, German Foundation. So if you need more information or need some practice, then I encourage you to check that out. But for right now, back to the formula, unequal comparisons, nominative case on both sides, Okay, and then we still have a conjugated verb. It's still the word bin. Then we have the base adjective plus an ER, which is putting it into what is called the comparative form of the adjective, okay? And we can see that in German and English, like I already talked about a couple slides ago, in the taller, right? Taller, taller with that ER. And in German, it's thankfully the same thing with the ERs, größer, größer, größer. We have the added umlauts there as well. We can talk about that another time. It's a fine detail. But what you need to realize is that in order to work with these formulas, in order to actually create a complete sentence, a complete sentence using als for the unequal comparison or using so vive, the first formula for an equal one, there are several other special subject areas that you need to feel comfortable with. And they are specifically the nominative case, base adjectives and then the comparative adjectives that I just mentioned. Okay, now it is possible that you could see these three subjects and think, oh sure, I, I actually already know what these things are, but there are some common pitfalls that English speakers will fall into with these three subject areas that we are going to talk about as well. And you don't wanna miss that. So we're going to start with looking at what you need to know about the nominative case. In the nominative case, we can work with a name, a noun, or a pronoun to make our comparisons, to say, ich bin so groß wie Tim, right? Using a name. Ich bin so groß wie mein ältester Cousin, right? We're using the noun Cousin as part of an entire noun phrase, my eldest cousin. Or we can use a pronoun and say, ich bin so groß wie er, which we have seen already, okay? So names, of course, that's super clear. Uh, the, the noun though, it's made clear by the declensions at play on the mine and the eltasta, and then the nominative pronouns are a, a fixed set of pronouns that are, at least generally speaking, obviously nominative and not any other case. If we take a closer look at nominative pronouns, we have ich, meaning I, du, meaning you, but ia, also meaning you, or in a American, like Southern American, y'all kind of sense, okay? Then we have er, sie, es, meaning he, she, it. Via, right, the plural of I means we. We already looked at ia as the plural for du, and then we have uh, z meaning they, right? So just like the z that means she, there's also a z that means they. Turns out there are more z's yet, they're always capitalized, and those are the formal use, whether they are singular, one person, or plural, multiple people, but we'll rein it back in uh, from, from that and stay focused just on these pronouns for right now to see, again, these examples of 
Ich bin so groß wie du. I am as tall as you. Ich bin so groß wie er. Or ich bin so groß wie sie. Ich bin so groß wie es. I am as tall as he or she or it. Ich bin so groß wie ihr. Right? I am as tall as y'all. Right? Multiple people you're talking to. Or finally, ich bin so groß wie sie. Lowercase. I am as tall as they. Right? Completely undistinguishable from saying I am as tall as she. We'd have to have context to know which one we're saying in German. So even if in English, you might say I am as tall as him or I am as tall as they uh, them sorry that is never what you want to say in German you can't ever use an accusative or a dative pronoun to make these comparisons right it has to be nominative on both sides both sides right and again that second one is the huge pitfall for for English speakers so I have a recommendation for you and that is it might sound a little wacky but if you want to improve your German then improve your English okay if you if you speak English properly right grammatically properly then you won't get into so much trouble when you're trying to translate things right the way that it intuitively makes sense to you in English will then be the way that it intuitively works in German and you won't have the problem anymore so here's the thing if we don't want to say I am as tall as him because that is wrong okay but saying I'm as tall as he at this point in the game just sounds very stilted, right? Like you'll get strange looks if you go around in English saying I'm as tall as he, <laughs> okay? But what you can get away with, and this is what I recommend, is to start saying I'm as tall as he is, right? Adding in that verb just I don't know, it, it, it softens it, it makes it more casual, okay? But this way your grammar is still correct and it won't throw you for such a loop that, that you need to say it the same way in German, that you have to say, I'm as tall as he, not without, without the is, right? You don't have to do that part in, in German. But this is excellent practice. Improve your English grammar and your German grammar will improve automatically, right? So same thing, I'm as smart as her, it's wrong, okay? But to say I'm as smart as she is stilted, so I'm as smart as she is, right? Hits all the bases of you don't sound like a weirdo, but you are also saying it correctly. Finally, I'm as happy as them, right? This is wrong because this should be in the nominative case, just like this is in the nominative case. We're making a comparison, yeah? So instead of that, and instead of the stilted version, I'm as happy as they, say I'm as happy as they are. The next subject area that you need to feel comfortable with in order to make equal and unequal comparisons in German is working with base adjectives. So for example, groß, klein, schön, glücklich, klug, these are all base or root adjectives. They can stand alone when we say things such as der Mann ist groß or das Kind ist klein, die Frau ist schön und klug, die Eltern sind glücklich, right? All of these adjectives are in their base forms. But again, returning to this world of the German case system and the clensions, if we have an adjective that comes directly in front of a noun, then the adjective has to take a declension, okay? So we can see here, ich sehe den großen Mann. Now we have our base adjective, but with declensions added to it. Um, das kleine Kind is ein Junge, right? We have the base adjective klein, but now we've added an E to it. That E is a declension. Die schöne, kluge Frau ist eine Lehrerin. We took the base adjectives schön and klug and we added E declensions to them. Die glücklichen Eltern halten das Baby. Again, we took a base adjective and we added declensions to it. And you have to be able to do this as well for making equal and unequal comparisons with either um, als or with so wie any time that you're using a noun and not a name and not a pronoun. If you're using a noun and you're going to have um, articles and adjectives in front of that, you will have to use declensions. 
final subject area that we have to talk more about is how do you work with comparative adjectives, not just the base form, but the comparative form specifically for those unequal comparisons that utilize the word it's to say you're taller than someone else, richer than someone else, etc. So if we start with the same base adjectives, groß and klein und schön, glücklich, klug, that we saw before, we make them into their comparative forms by adding on ERs, right? Always an ER, just like in English. In fact, English is I think maybe more, we could argue more complicated because sometimes we'll have spelling differences such as the, the Y in happy becoming an I or doubling up the, the G, um, stuff like that. Not to mention instances when in English we use a totally other formula and say more beautiful, not beautifuler, right? So that's actually uh, covered in another video more on that. A second, but back to the German, we have the ERs every time, and then I uh, and then in many instances, we're also adding in an umlaut, like we see in the Grusa, right? So there's the formula base adjective plus ER and an umlaut, and that makes it then possible for us to say, der Mann ist größer als sie, das Kind ist kleiner als der Hund, right? Notice nominative case here, yeah? Der Hund, not den Hund or dem Hund. Die Frau ist schöner und klüger als die meisten. Die Eltern sind glücklicher als das schreiende Baby. Okay, and again, this is in the nominative case. All of the declensions at use here indicate the nominative case. Now, what I want you to notice, what you need to notice, is that all of these adjectives are standing alone, is how I put it, okay? So they're taking this, this base comparative adjective form, and they are not coming in front of nouns. Okay, they are standing alone, separated from nouns. And this is then how they exist, is in this, this base comparative form, which is the base adjective plus the ER and the umlaut that makes like our new base comparative form, if you will. If the comparative adjective is coming in front of a noun, it's part of a noun phrase, now we have to also deal with the clensions. Again, okay, always come back to declensions when we're learning German. So here we have the base comparative form, which again could be further broken down into the concept of the base adjective plus an ER, right? And the umlaut where possible. But now we have an E declension added onto it to give us der größere Mann half dem Kind. Then we have here, uh, Base adjective, klein, meaning small. If we add the er to it, nowhere to put an umlaut. Now we have the new base comparative form specifically, but now we still have to add declensions to that because it's part of a noun phrase, dem kleineren Kind, okay? And the same thing is true for the other examples. So we have die schönere, klügere Frau erhält das Angebot. So we have the base adjective, when we add the ER, it's now the, the base comparative form, and now we have to add the E declension specifically because it's part of a noun phrase. It's occurring not standing alone, but coming in front of a noun, directly in front of a noun, okay? And then finally, die glücklicheren Eltern kommen aus dem Urlaub zurück. And again, we have base adjective, if we add the ER, we have now the base comparative adjective form, and then we have to put on a declension because it's part of a noun phrase. Now to conclude this video, I want to give you the bonus of a few slides talking about comparative adjective outliers that do unexpected things. So for example, here are five adjectives that when they go from their base forms to their comparative forms, they don't have to take an umlaut. You could put an umlaut uh, here, and that's not 
uh, wrong, both versions exist. So you'll see it with and without the umlaut in the comparative form. Then we also have um, some outliers where an E is being dropped, right? So this E is being dropped. Yeah, so that we don't, so that it's just, it's easier to say. So that sensible in the base form goes to sensible, right? And not sensible. Dunkel just goes to dunkler and not dunkeler. Teuer goes to teurer and not teurerer, which would be, it's just, it's harder to say. Trocken, trockner, bitter, bitter. Okay. A final third category of outliers are ones that have some overall spelling changes. And these are all uh, some very common adjectives. So these are ultra valuable to know. So hoch, meaning high, becomes höher, uh, higher. Gut becomes a completely different word, besser. Bald, also a completely different word, eher. Gern becomes lieber. Viel becomes mehr, right? So uh, those are some very important adjectives to know. Wow, that was a lot of information on how to correctly use als and sowie digging into the nitty gritties of the nominative case, base adjectives, comparative adjectives, awesome handy formulas that you can work with, talking about those pitfalls that English speakers make, but you don't have to. I hope that if you need some more help, especially with the case system and declensions, that you consider studying with me in my paid course, German Foundations. But I also hope that you continue learning with me here on YouTube because in the very next video, I talk more about base adjectives, comparative adjectives, and the final form of adjective called the superlative, which is like in English when we say strong, stronger, strong S. So you don't want to miss out on that. Click for the next video and I'll see you there.